Okay, so let's sit, you know, step back and summarize here for a minute. Um, your nervous system consists of neurons, right? These are individual cells that can be very short, that can be very long, right? Going from the motor cortex all the way down to the base of the spinal cord. And along their length, they're going to carry information, right? And this information is going to be in the form of an electrical current, a sodium current, which is going to be, you know, initiated when we depolarize a cell, right, to a particular threshold value, minus 55. It's going to race along to the axon terminal, right? It's going to result in the depolarization of that terminal, the opening of voltage-gated calcium channels, the entry of calcium into the cell, and then the coupled release of the neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft. Now, that synaptic cleft, or that neurotransmitter, is going to go across that synaptic cleft and interact with receptors that are located postsynaptically. These can be ionotropic receptors, right, which will bind the neurotransmitter and shift their shape in such a way as to allow for sodium to pass through, which would depolarize the next cell and perhaps set off another action potential. It could also open a chloride channel, right, which would, you know, provoke the entry of chloride into the cell driven by the concentration gradient force. Um, and it would hyperpolarize that next cell and make firing less likely, right? It could also this neurotransmitter, you know, bind to metabotropic receptors, which can, which will result in a shift in shape of these receptors, right, and the release of a G protein, the first messenger inside, and that release can have all sorts of influences over, you know, the functioning of that cell, the metabolism of that cell. It can actually provoke changes in gene expression and protein synthesis, which would, you know, ultimately even change the composition of that postsynaptic membrane so that it responds differently to neurotransmitter in the future. So what is the point of this whole system? Well, we, these neurons, these individual units, are actually linked up with each other in networks. And you know, some of these networks are obviously very complex. But other networks we can describe are quite simple. And a simple network can actually accomplish very complicated behavior, very, very adaptive and, and useful behavior. So let me give you an example. So if you have, you know, your finger and you're, you're touching the stove or you're touching, you know, flame, something hot, okay? Um, you're going to do physical damage, right, to the, uh, if, you, if you really burn yourself, you do physical damage to cells, right? Those phospholipid bilayers are going to be burst and they're going to be proteins that are actually, you know, typically found inside, remember the anions found inside the cell are suddenly going to be out there in the extracellular space. They are going to bind these proteins to receptors that are located on the membrane of neurons that are specialized for the conduction of pain information, right? If, if there's tissue damage, that's when you're going to feel pain. So the, um, the binding of these proteins typically found inside cells to these receptors on pain sensory neurons is going to result in a shift in shape of those receptors. It's going to open a channel that will allow for sodium to pass through. Sodium will enter, right, concentration gradient force, electrical force. It'll depolarize the cell, right, and you're going to get an action potential generated in this pain neuron. It's going to start heading back, right, towards your spinal cord. Okay? It's going to enter your central nervous system, right, go through the meninges and enter into the spinal cord. Here it is going to make contact with an interneuron, okay, and this interneuron is going to be stimulated, you know, by... Um, uh, neurotransmitter acting at ionotropic receptors because when you want when you're you're being injured you want a fast response right so it'll depolarize the cell send a message neurotransmitter will be released and it'll depolarize this next cell which is a, a motor neuron which will exit you know through a spinal nerve and head out to the arm and it'll provoke you know retraction of the limb from the source of the pain so this is a simple network it's a little more complex because while you contract this muscle, you also have to relax this muscle. It'll also involve an interneuron that'll, you know, um, hyperpolarize the motor control over another muscle. But what you'll get is a, what we call a reflex response. It, it'll pull away your limb from the site of injury, you know, before you are even aware of it. I mean, this information will then travel up, of course, the spinal cord and reach the central nervous system where it will be mapped somewhere in the brain. Um, and you can, you know, ultimately feel it and have it inform uh, your future behavior. So, 
Basic reflexes are based on these what we call neural networks, right? And so are higher cognitive functions. Um, in, for, for example, attention, memory, language, which are all you know, complex abilities that are going to be influenced um, by drugs.